Are we all on board? Are we ready? Is that why you're a good team, Tyson, you and Ben? 100%, because that lines him up and I knock him down. <laughs> Dream team. Thank you, Hey, Tyson, congratulations. You were in the USA colors coming out to living in America. I know you, you, know you fought a couple times in the US before, it's Cunningham Wilder. But did you feel like this was really your entrance and your first time in front of a lot of people's eyes here in America? I felt like this was my coming out party. Um, the, they, you saw me fight in December of last year. Um, I'll tell you it was 147 pounds for that fight, so it wasn't that much strong risk, or maybe I shouldn't talk about fight as soon as I did after two bomb fights I came back, but I did anyway, so we're not here to talk about the past. This time, I had enough training time, I was strong, I was fit, I was ready to part the show. Um, from the ring wall to all week publicity, I felt calm and relaxed and, you know, I'm confident in my own ability. We worked very hard for this fight. I trained in training camp for eight weeks and then I came into the camp fit anyway. I didn't have no time off, so I'm active, you know, and I'm getting match fit again. Um, looking forward to the next fight. Are you basically now planting your flag in the United States and fighting here for the foreseeable future without UK fights? Um, I think the next few fights are definitely going to be in America. Uh, Bob and Frank will tell you more about the detail because I'm not... Uh, 100% on what's going on next and who we're fighting next, but yeah, I think the foreseeable future is uh, USA for sure. And when did you get the inspiration to come out in that Rocky IV kind of entrance? You know, I thought to myself, no one's done this before, so I wanted to put on a statement on a show and I wanted to have fun. I didn't come here to just be deadly serious and, and have a fight with somebody because nobody's really interested in that. It's another boxing match, isn't it? We've seen a thousand before and I'm sure we've seen another million throughout history, but it's the character, it's things people don't do. I don't take myself that seriously, as you can tell. I'm just a, a chubby guy who comes and has fun, I'm relaxed, I don't care about fighting, it's spread naturally what I do. Um, it, it's fun and games for me in there. And I enjoy the ring walk, I enjoy the build-up, I enjoy the whole week, and I enjoy the fight, but like Ben said, it wasn't punch perfect, although it was good performance, I still got hit with one punch, which is one too many, in my opinion. And 
lost what he was, so I'm gonna go back and train and get back in the gym as soon as we get back Tuesday. So no time off for you all day, sir. <laughs> Sorry, yes, sir, but you can't have it back. We've got to go back training on Tuesday. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Jobs to do. Tyson, good yes. to see you. Oh, how are you, buddy? We're great. Let's be real. Could tonight could have gone any better for you, given the victory that you did your sparring partner, partner Sonny Kanto, getting the victory following right after you? Could have gone any better than what you envisioned. I thought it went really well, to be honest. I was happy. I'm not going to sit here and uh, complain about anything. It was what it was. It was a good fight. Important show for the American fans. And, um, thank you to everybody who came tonight. Thank you to everybody who travelled over and everybody who waited up at home. Uh, because we didn't come on to what, five in the morning, Frank? So, all the fans who tuned in around the world and doing a great job, you know, I was happy with everything that went on, but it was only the start. You're going to see much more of Tyson Fury on US soil, and Bob will tell you more about it. What do you think of all those watching? What do you think he was thinking watching you tonight? Where's that question coming from? I can't see you. Oh, there you go. Say that again, sir. If Deontay Wilder was watching, I'm sure he was. What do you think he was wa you know, thinking watching you do that second round knockout, break his nose? He was probably thinking, why didn't I think of that entrance? <laughs> Which I sure he should be. <laughs> but you know, I've uh, got something better plan for next time. I'm sure it's going to be a great show. And also, was it a little bit extra sweeter in a way to take care of the way you did after Joshua you know, had his upset? Saw a British fighter travel over to America last week and week before, and he looked like he didn't want to be in there. For whatever reasons, we're not going to go into that tonight, it's not my concern or business. But tonight was Tyson Fury, Las Vegas. It doesn't get any bigger than this. This is the biggest thing that has happened in my career so far. Uh, topping the bill at MGM Grand. I was in, in the car on the way with my wife, and I said, I think we made it, Paris. She said, Why? I said, Because we're headlining in Vegas. This is it. And um, got a good show, and we was happy with it for the win. All my family, all my friends, and everybody came over, and was all happy with the performance. Your brother Shane, the biggest critic, he told me it was complete shit. You're the best! Back to the drawing board for Shane. <laughs> but it was what it was. Happy with everything. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen you this excited in a long time. Because what was this night like for you? I enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I enjoyed part of the show, I enjoyed being in there boxing, slipping and sliding out the way of shots. I said to Ben before, like, only an idiot put his hands down and to try and swerve out the way of shots and I'm not coming at an attack. But that's what makes it watchable because at any given moment I could have been knocked out in there. But it was lucky that I didn't, so it was what it was. Congratulations, first and foremost. Uh, eliminating the obvious names that always come up when we talk about this after a fight. Who gets you really excited? Like, who do you see coming up? You're a student of the game. Who do you want to beat up? Anybody who these two guys put in front of me. It doesn't really matter. The outcome will always be the same. Considering, like, if I get fair play, then we'll win. But uh, I feel better with the one bit of weight more on me. I put an extra 10, 11 pounds for this fight than I did last time. Um, I felt stronger and I felt bigger, you know, so I was happy with it. Okay, as a follow-up, having a great night like this, how much does it make the fire burn even more to get it your hands on Deontay again? You know, Deontay Wilder is coming. This fight's going to happen. There's, there was three horses in the heavyweight division, and then there was two. And I already beat him once, so I beat him again, and again, and again. And he ain't going to fight 50% Tyson Fury anymore. He's going to get a fully match fit, back active, back sharp, Tyson Fury. You know, it's heavyweight boxing and anything can happen at any given moment, but the way I box at my style, I think it's kryptonite for anybody. As long as they don't knock me out, which I've seen, it can happen, but they've got to keep me down. If I they don't do that, then I'll keep winning. Right in front, Tyson. Congratulations, that was a nice knockout for you. Oh, happy to see that. My question for you is, uh, as Bob said, you're going to fight another time in this fall, and Frank, you're going to do another bout, and DeAndre's going to have his fight in a rematch with Ortiz. Given the promotion and the hoopla around this fight, what obviously will take place in the hoopla for your next fight, and also for when DeAndre fights uh, with the promotion that he'll get in that fight, how big do you think that that rematch can be, just in terms of 
popularity pay per view, all the things that go into a big mega fight? I think it's the biggest fight in world boxing, barring none. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, the rematch is the biggest fight we're going to see in the next years, a few years anyway. Don't see anybody else coming up or, or can be as big. You've got two undefeated heavyweights, lineal champion, WBC champion, um, fighting, fighting in the prime. Uh, doesn't get any bigger than this. Wow. Heavyweight division, you know, the heavyweight division is back, it's on fire. And, and it's, uh, everybody wants to be a part of it, you know, you've got a lot of young ones coming up, you've got a lot of second tier heavyweight trying to get into that first tier. There's a, there's a close pack, Huntable's down, but at the minute it's a two horse race. So, it is what it is. If, we, if I can get a, just the thought from Bob on that same topic, and Frank also, just on just the magnitude of what that rematch could be, given that they're both going to have another fight before it takes place. Well, if, and I expect both guys get through their fights, the next fights, the fight will be uh, first uh, quarter of next year. And I really believe now, I'm not blowing smoke, it's going to be on pay-per-view, and I can't see why that fight won't equal or surpass the numbers that were done on the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. The two little guys, great fighters, Mayweather Pacquiao, was built up for a lot of years, but still they're not heavyweights. And they're not heavyweights of this kind of category, and now of this notoriety. The reason the uh, Fury Wilder fight, the first one, didn't do real numbers is because, let's be honest, other than some hardcore boxing fans, the public in America didn't know this guy. They really didn't know. Now they know him, and after the fight in October, they will know him even more. Wilder will hopefully have a great fight with Ortiz, and beat Ortiz, and the rematch, I think, is capable of doing over four million pay-per-view offers. Can I get a hell yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Frank, yeah. I absolutely agree with Bob, what he said. It's a huge fight. And what we want, which I say, is justice. And he got robbed. No doubt about that in that fight. He's robbed. What he's looking for is justice and fair play. So he's on the level playing field. And he, in my opinion, will cement his legacy with being the best in his generation. He's a great anyway. Just think about all what he's been through, the time he's had out of the ring. I mean, you look at him in the ring, look how fast he is, his reflexes, um, his punch power, his boxing brain, his head and shoulders above all. Right here. Tyson, uh, you said that there was Three big guys in the heavyweight division. I'm assuming, obviously, yourself. You were referring to AJ and to Wilder, and you said now there's two. Do you not make anything of Andy Ruiz uh, defeating? Do you not consider him in, in that as you know the third guy at the top of the heavyweight division? No disrespect to Andy Ruiz. He's done a great performance, but he's locked into a contract with uh, Joshua, so I don't consider him a part of this two horse race. No. Um, I think me and Wilder beat the uh, Andrew is quite comfortably. And uh, also, before you walked in, Bob mentioned a possible date of October 5th at Madison Square Garden. Obviously, uh, that would be your first fight in the big room. Uh, what would that mean to you? Obviously, that is a closer fight uh, flight for the UK fans. What would that mean to you to have all those UK fans have a closer fight, uh, you know, fight over to New York and be able to fight in the big room, the Mecca box? It'd be brilliant, you know. A lot of fans travel here to Las Vegas, so a few hours off the journey, it's close to a five hour flight, you know. Gives people an excuse to go to New York, go to Las Vegas. You know, people want to come and see the big fights, and, and you know, we're, we're putting on big fights now, so uh, all the fans can come and enjoy and have a good time for a couple of days or a week or however long they want to come. So it's fantastic to have the support of all the traveling people who came over, uh, made the effort, spent their money, their hard earned money, may I say. To come see me fight, I appreciate it. Tyson. 
you said you know, obviously Ruiz is busy with the Joshua rematch for the rest of this year, but if you were to get the, the victory in the rematch, you and Wilder see each other the first quarter of next year, is he not basically the next next man up to, uh, I mean he has three belts? Yeah, 100%. Um, if, he, if he beats Joshua in the rematch, then he, he's, uh, he's next in line. Whoever wins that, I mean Wilder will fight uh, Andy Ruiz. I don't see why these fights shouldn't be made. Um, there's nothing I see with Andy Ruiz that makes me afraid. Um, and I think it'd be a good fight, a good, uh, good match on the styles. Which, uh, which, which one of your suits is, uh, has been your favorite of, of this week? I don't know, I'll let, uh, let the fans decide, but this is a bit of a show stopper, isn't it? This one. I've been sporting the, uh, the bare chest and the hairy like an animal, so it's all going down in Las Vegas. If you can't fight wearing suits like this, you're going to be in trouble, I'll tell you. <laughs> Bob, you mentioned, um, you mentioned earlier before Tyson... Oh, sorry. Hey, Bob. Bob, you mentioned um, before Tyson came in that the next fight in October could be uh, Madison Square Garden. But is the Wilder Fury fight definitely nailed down as a Vegas fight? Because all those big ones that have made enormous amounts of money have taken place. I, I would think, I would think, that you see the, the difference is uh, if it's a massive fight like this would be, like Mayweather Pacquiao, you know, like uh, Canelo Golovkin was, uh, it belongs in Las Vegas because the casinos bring in the biggest punters, and therefore the prices are sky high. A game that would do maybe two million pounds in the O2 in London or do two million, three million dollars in New York uh, would do 30 million dollars here in Las Vegas. And uh, it has the infrastructure to handle a big fight. So without any commitment from anybody, uh, I would think that Las Vegas would be the likely place uh, for uh, that uh, fight. Have you have you already gone into any talks with anyone about possible dates and venues here yet? Have you talked to whom? The two the venues or about the dates here at all yet? Have you begun the, the uh, concert? We, we talk to everybody and we are able to discuss possible dates when the, the it, it's most appropriate to do the biggest revenue and then of course we have to match it against the sports schedule in the United States, and perhaps, you know, uh, in the UK. I don't think the Premier League is uh, in championships then. But, uh, we yeah, because for example, you don't want to put it like uh, in competition to the Super Bowl. And you don't want to put it really in competition to what we call March Madness, which is the college basketball tournament, which is so big. So all of that has to be done. As Todd does that, he talks to all the properties. I'm sure the wild people are talking to them as well, and we'll have the appropriate place. But I would think it would be Las Vegas. Can you just confirm that you, you that fight with uh, Mayweather, with Mayweather and Pacquiao grossed over 600 million US dollars? You think it's that big a fight could be on that kind of scale? Again, again, why would why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? People always, when I was in the business for many years, always look for the big, big heavyweight fight. That was Ali Fraser one did more business than any other fight had ever done up to that point. I can't see why this wouldn't happen. And particularly when it matches uh, somebody from the UK, who is not coming over as an opponent, but is a co-equal at least uh, in stature with an American. It's got to, reasonably speaking, do tremendous business on paper. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. And when the time comes, Frank and I will help sell. <laughs> but we got, sure. the, we got the best salesman sitting between us. <laughs> Hey Tyson, over here to your left. Uh, just to ask you about Wilder versus Ortiz, uh, it was a life and death fight for Wilder the last time around. 
Does that concern you? You're sitting here, Bob told me the other day, he thought, if I could do five million, you hear him now talking about these massive gates. Does it concern you Wilder's taking such a difficult fight for him against a guy, a big puncher like Luis Ortiz? No, it doesn't concern me, you know. Luis Ortiz, like I said before, is 147 years old. So Wilder should knock him out quicker than he did last time. I believe Wilder will get him out there a couple of rounds. Catch him early, and he's gone. He's got no legs underneath the guy. Like I said, he's 147 years old. Um, it was a clash of style before, first time, probably fought Sam Paul, who was experienced. So I think he'll get him out of there quite quick. I'm not concerned, but even if the worst does happen, while he gets chained in the round, then whenever a door closes, another one opens. So what's meant to be will be. We can't alter what's going to happen in the future. We have no control of it. So. I only can control myself and do what I've got to do, my, my end of the deal. Um, and I want to do that in October the 5th or September 21st, whichever one we go up. And I can only do what I can do as a fighter to prevent it happening to me. First off, I want to say congrats, Tyson. Just want to say you look good out there, my man. Thank you, Sonny, my man! <laughs> Big shout out to Sonny Conto, the Bronco Conto. Uh, Great sparring partner and a great person to be around. I'd like to bring him to the next training camp because he give me some great Tell, work. tell us about your fight, what happened? Uh, hey, second round, KO, TKO. Whee! 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 You were watching his fight in the dressing room. Two oh, rounds, man. and you figured two rounds. Yep, yep. <laughs> Found me. Good stuff, congratulations, sir.